travel chaos calls for more than just apologies after 70,000 people faced rail delays over the long weekend. Taiwan's former vice president saw the Pope three times at the Vatican. Taiwan says it's a sign of close relationship between the two diplomatic allies. COVID controversy. The government is defending itself against allegations that it tried to block a private vaccine purchase. And praying for the perfect match. We meet the singles who are celebrating a very special birthday. A warm welcome to Time Plus News. I'm Betty Chen. Lawmakers are calling on the Transport Ministry to answer questions in the legislature after massive rail disruption. The Mid-Autumn Festival long weekend saw some 70,000 passengers delayed. And as Rick Glauber reports, it's not the only crisis facing Taiwan Railways Administration. Chaos on the railway network during one of Taiwan's busiest weekends for travel, the three-day Mid-Autumn Festival holiday. <laughs> Over three days, more than 70,000 travelers faced delayed journeys. Before Taiwan Railways Administration finally fixed signal malfunctions in Jianghua on the country's crucial West Coast line. It's the latest crisis to hit government-run Taiwan Railways, already under fire over its safety record. Last April, a derailment on the East Coast killed 50 people in Taiwan's biggest rail disaster in decades. It's also facing ongoing strikes by railway workers, unhappy with pay, benefits and staffing as the government agency transitions to a state-owned company. As lawmakers call on the Minister of Transport to answer for this latest mishap in the legislature, it is everyday commuters regularly facing disruption and safety concerns that are desperate for Taiwan Railways to get back on track. Patrick Chen and Rick Lauert for Taiwan Plus. Mid-autumn festival celebrations have ended in tragedy for one family in southern Taiwan. A fire in Tainan claimed the lives of an elderly couple and their granddaughter, though another granddaughter escaped. She said they were preparing a festival barbecue when an extension cord sparked the blaze. Emergency responders said piles of trash in her home fed the flames and hampered rescue efforts. It's the latest in a string of fatal fires in Taiwan in recent years where household clutter may have played the role. Taiwan says meetings between the country's former vice president and the pope at the Vatican demonstrate that relations between the two diplomatic allies remain close. Taiwan's former vice president Chen Jianren had three brief encounters with Pope Francis during a formal nine-day visit that ended Sunday. The Vatican is Taiwan's only official European ally. Chen's trip was mainly to attend former Pope John Paul I's beautification ceremony. He also met Pope Francis when he honored Chen as a member of a Vatican Scientific Academy. Taiwan's government has denied reports that it interfered with private efforts to purchase COVID-19 vaccine doses last year. 
Taiwanese charity, the Tsidi Foundation, and two of the country's largest enterprises, Foxconn and TSMC, bought a combined 15 million doses of the Pfizer BNT jab for public use. A Tsidi official recently claimed that the group had received multiple phone calls from government officials trying to dissuade them from making the purchase. The distribution rights for the Pfizer vaccine in Asia are held by a Chinese company, Shanghai Fuxing. A cabinet spokesperson has denied this claim, saying the government did everything it could to facilitate the deals. He says the deals could not have gone ahead without official assistance. Chen Shizhong, who was health minister at the time, also denied interfering. Tsiji has since released an official statement thanking the government for their assistance in procuring the vaccines. Preparations are underway for the funeral of the UK's Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen's coffin is now lying in state in the Scottish capital, Edinburgh. It will be flown to London on Tuesday. The Queen will then lie in state in Westminster Abbey for four days before the funeral ceremony on September 19th. The guest list hasn't yet been made public, but U.S. President Joe Biden, Japanese Emperor Naruhito, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro are among the world leaders expected to attend. The death of Queen Elizabeth II has put a spotlight on the Southern Taiwan Art Museum hosting an exhibit of British portraits. As John Van Trias reports, the Queen's portrait has become the star attraction and demand for Queen Elizabeth merchandise at a gift shop is soaring. 500 years worth of portraits of Britain's best and brightest. And it's Queen Elizabeth II that many are coming to see. Since August, the Chimei Museum in Tainan has hosted the Taiwan leg of a traveling exhibit from the UK's National Portrait Gallery. Shakespeare, Darwin, and the Beatles are all here. But there's been a shift of tone since the Queen's death last week. Many are now coming to the museum to admire her portrait and reflect on her life. And the museum has found that suddenly, visitors are wanting to take the Queen's image with them, too. Even here, nearly 10,000 kilometers from London, people are feeling the end of an era. James Rayner and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Coming up here on Taiwan Plus, we look at how one Taiwanese artist fills our blank pages with the power of his imagination. Stay with us after the break. So you think the sun gave you something? You can't use a few words to use a few words, but it has now. 山就是給了一個我們遠離世俗的環境磨砺的地方那如果今天不让你爬山你觉得会死吗生命肯定会延续下去但我想心灵有一部分会枯萎掉吧 Thanks for watching Taiwan Plus. For more great stories from Taiwan and around the world, please download the Taiwan Plus app.
What makes this island nation exceptionally punch way above its might? It's the fascinating human stories we heard, plus the greatest movies we saw. The enduring and painstaking past we learned, plus the beautiful people we met. The delightful cuisines we tasted, plus the coexistence of many cultures we embraced. The powerful, energizing technology we invented, plus the ancient masterpieces we preserved. The human rights we advanced, plus the motherland we called home. Taiwan Plus, we will continue to show you unheard compelling stories that touch our hearts. Come with us as we embark on yet another unraveling journey to the world. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. Russia has attacked power stations and other infrastructure in Ukraine's northeast, causing widespread blackouts. The attacks come after a Ukrainian counteroffensive forced Moscow's troops to pull back in recent days. It's Ukraine's biggest battlefield success since it stopped Russian troops seizing the capital, Kiev, near the start of the war. Louise Watt reports. Firefighters tackle a blaze at a thermal power plant in Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv after a Russian missile strike. Russian attacks have left much of the city without power and water. Moscow said it was carrying out high-precision strikes on Ukrainian military units and reserves in Kharkiv. But Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russia was aiming to deprive his people of light and heat in retaliation for Ukraine driving Russian troops from most of the Kharkiv region. Ukrainian forces have retaken more than 3,000 square kilometers in the country's east this month in a remarkable counteroffensive. Ukraine says more than 40 settlements in the Kharkiv region have been liberated. On Sunday, Zelensky shared this video of a Ukrainian soldier raising the country's flag in a village in the Kharkiv region. And several other videos on social media also show Ukrainian troops now in towns and villages that, until recently, were held by Russia, including Izium, which was a major regional base for Russian forces. In its hasty retreat, Moscow left behind weapons and munitions. But the now more than 200-day-old war is still far from over. Both sides have suffered heavy losses. But as the attacks continue, neither side is showing any signs of giving up. Ricky and Louise Watt for Taiwan Plus. A massive earthquake has rocked Papua New Guinea, killing at least five people. The magnitude 7.6 quake struck the country's east and was felt in the capital of Port Moresby, some 500 kilometers away. The extent of the quake or the damage is unclear. The tremor struck a remote area, but there are reports of landslides, collapsed buildings and damaged infrastructure. An epic human tragedy. That's how UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres described the devastation left in the wake of severe flooding in Pakistan during a visit to some of the worst hit areas this weekend. Over a million people have been left homeless and almost 1,400 are dead after parts of the country saw more than four times as much rain as in a normal monsoon season. 
Pakistan says total damage amounts to more than 30 billion U.S. dollars, with many houses and vital infrastructure swept away. Both the United Nations and Pakistan say climate change is to blame for the extreme weather. And Guterres was stark in his assessment. I've seen many humanitarian disasters in the world, but I have never seen climate carnage on this scale. I have simply no words to describe what I've seen today. Extremely heavy rain is expected across northern Taiwan on Monday and Tuesday as Typhoon Muifa skirts Taiwan's east coast. The typhoon is currently situated just over 300 kilometers east of Taiwan's mainland and is traveling north towards China. A sea warning has been issued and wind speed in the typhoon reached 190 kilometers per hour. Nearly 100 ferry services between Taiwan's mainland and outlying islands have been canceled on Monday and Tuesday. Tony's virtual reality film, The Man Who Couldn't Leave, has won the top prize in the immersive category at the Venice International Film Festival. The film recounts Taiwan's white terror period in the 1950s when the Chinese nationalist government declared martial law, imprisoning and killing thousands of people. The director, Singing Chan, says that the film took over two years to make and is meant to honor those who sacrificed themselves for Taiwan's freedom. Mid-Autumn Festival is a time for people to get together with their family, but for some singles, the day has another significance. It's also the birthday of the Taoist matchmaking god. Reporter Yu Jing Huang went to the Taipei Xiahai City God Temple over the weekend to witness a birthday party like no other. At first glance, this may seem like a strange place to hold a birthday party, but these people are actually seen to the matchmaking god whose birthday dance on the Mid-Autumn Festival. They've also brought him gifts. Another thing that's unusual about this birthday party is that all of the guests are hoping to walk away with a gift of their own. If you're single and looking for a partner, this is what you have to do. First, at the entrance, you need to pick up these four things. Coins made of lead, which will lead you to the right person. A red thread which ties two lovers together. Candy, symbolizing the sweetness of love. And paper money, you give that to the gods to thank them. So what do you do with the other items? You swirl the coins and red thread in the smoke of the incense, and then bring them home with you. And as for the candy, you eat it. But first, you need to pray to the gods. You begin with the supreme deity and the city god before moving on to the matchmaker. Have a look at the people behind me. They are praying to the matchmaking god, and you can see they are taking their time. Because the more specific you are about what you want, the more likely it is that the matchmaking god will find you the right person. Now, if you do find a person of your dreams, you'll need to come back to the temple with a gift. The temple usually rolls out a nine-tier cake for the matchmaking god's birthday. But this year, because of a surge in COVID cases, they are handing out individual cakes instead. And they're shaped like golden turtles, which are a symbol for rich husbands. Even if your ideal partner doesn't appear before your eyes, at least you'll be left with the sweet taste of cake in your mouth. Kamashi and Yuji Huang for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan athletes have won big at an international taekwondo competition. 
Luo Jialing claimed the gold medal in the women's 57-kilogram event at a Polish Open in Europe. And Chen Boyit won the top prize for the men's 58-kilogram category at the same tournament. Luo says after their matches, they plan to enjoy a late mid-autumn festival. An amateur Taiwanese photographer has compiled over 300,000 photos of Taiwan's natural beauty into a five-minute time-lapse video. Have a look at this stunning image. This is Xi Ding in southern Taiwan with mist running off mountains. The photographer Chen Yongfeng is from the nearby city of Jiayi. The project took him two years to complete. Chen says he had to visit some of the locations multiple times to get all the shots he needed. The video includes photos from some of Taiwan's most scenic areas, including Yilan County in the east and the central regions of Jiayi and Nantou. It's often said that a blank page is the scariest thing for an artist. But for one Taiwanese illustrator, there's not enough paper in the world to get all his ideas down. Come with us as we take a peek into the whimsical world of an artist simply known as Jimmy. Yo 我畫圖文書有個好處一开始是我就是不要画那么focus在哪里的东西 其中有一个法国的版本寄过来一个是找不到对方其实就很早就把吉米的主意闭上眼睛一下下就是
，当你闭上眼睛的时候，你就可以想象有有个鸟飞过去啊，遇到一只狗，遇到一只猫，遇到任何啊，所以你就会有很多可爱的画面出来。然后我们再用那些可爱的画面放在每个捷运站，就说你只要闭上眼睛一下，你还是可以到任何地方，有无限的美好。某一站的雕塑，这个就是让人家这样做的。这到时候会翻成铜，然后会上一点颜色。这个帽子最好是有一组系列感。这明度在高。我觉得颜色可以做多一点，然后到时候摸一摸也会不见了。对啊，这个这个。就让它两站是很容易知道说，哎，我在这站是跟红色的。有一年不知道什么星就降临了，就觉得。我应该去做任何可以做的其他事情。想要什么事情，赶快做一做，免得来不及了。Thanks for watching Town Plus News. I'm Betty Chen. Finally, we we'll leave you with images of the fireworks display at Danshui Fisherman's Wharf. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, please download the Town Plus app. Stay safe and see you next time.